On Wednesday night on main event television, one of the most exciting domestic matchups we've seen in Australian boxing in recent years. When the young star on the rise, Nikita Zhu, takes on the defending and established Australian super welterweight champion Dylan Biggs. And before they fight, we're going to have a conversation now. Nikita, good to see you. And Dylan, good to see you as well. I mentioned that you are the Australian champion, and clearly you are. But your second on the poster, there's talk about you walking out first for this fight as well. Are you feeling like the A side or the B side? In my, in my head, I'm definitely the A side, but um, like, like Nikita said in previous interviews, we're under management. It's, it's not part of what we do. I'm there to train, I'm there to fight, and there's only two people to get in the ring, whether, whether they get in the ring first or second doesn't, doesn't make too much of a difference. Would you feel disrespected though, if as the Australian champion, you're meant to walk out second. Would you feel disrespected if you aren't allowed to do that? Yeah, definitely. I feel like it's dishonouring tradition. I understand the, the premise behind him walking out second, but like I said in my early interviews, the belt should mean more than his last name. We're fighting for the title and that's what it's about. What do you think, Nikita? Because there's been a lot of talk about this. I could care less. I listen to the one word, you're up. And Whenever I have to walk, I have to walk. It's two words. <laughs> Good counting. He says that he would feel disrespected, though. You have the opportunity, I'm sure. You could tell people what you want to do. What do you want to do? It's not about what I want to do. It's about what the promoters want to do. It's their event. Do you think that's a bit of a cop-out? Do you think he should be taking a stand? Oh, I, I can't tell him how to act. It's, it's not my place. I understand his point. It's we're under management, like I said before, but he understands the tradition, so do I. So I stand where I stand, and, and I can't tell him where to stand. Nikita, do you think Dylan sort of has to accept the fact that you're the star of the show, that this is about you and your career trajectory? Possibly, yeah, possibly. Um, look, the champion hasn't gone out first. Hasn't gone out. Uh, hasn't gone out first, or hasn't gone out second every single time. There have been multiple instances where the champion goes out first, and it's simply just a business decision. Has anything else in this promotion made you feel disrespected? There's the promo clip where Nikita's with his dog and drinking milk and then throws a knife at your face. The first time you saw that, what did you think? Oh, I got interviewed a few days ago, and it's the same thing. I thought it was stupid. I thought it was a cringy. Just cringy, cringy was yeah. the word, yeah. I said cringy <laughs> and stupid. It's, yeah, I stand by that. Uh, it, I'm not a fan of it. What did you find stupid about it? Or cringy <sighs> as well? The eating the raw meat and the, the whole vibe behind it, really. It's just strange. Yeah, well, like, it's, it's not something that I'm proud to kind of expose or kind of show, but I have been eating, like, raw foods, raw organs, so... It's not that stupid of a thing. It's just an over-exaggeration, or not over-exaggeration, it's just a... A dramatisation. Yeah, a dramatisation of kind of what I am, what my, what my personality's like, so... Yeah, I get it, that's you, but I stand by what I say. So you, you, are you having a dig at the filmmakers or my philosophy on life? It's a good question. Yeah, I'm not too sure. I'd, I'd say just the video in general. So the filmmakers? Yeah, I could say both, really, but... Uh -huh. Interesting. What about the throwing of the knife at your face in that film? What did you think of that? Oh, just silly. I get it. We're, we're fighters. It's, aggression's part of the game, and that's cool. It is what it is. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a dramatisation. It's, it's trying to emphasise these emotions that the filmmakers were trying to establish that kind of going through my head, through my head, through my mind. So I got so many great reviews, people were saying how much they loved it. And look, it was one of the only videos, promotional videos that I've watched. And I was like, damn, that was cool. <laughs> so I couldn't care less if you think it's stupid or cringy, but yeah, I thought it was dope. Are you surprised by his reaction? Cause clearly he doesn't like it. I'll why would he? Like, if there was a video like that of him, I'd obviously not enjoy it as well. So it uh, could be a little bit of jealousy that he didn't get a video like that. So who knows?
I wouldn't make a video like that, personally. Why is that? Oh, it's just not me, not who I am as a person. It's, n it's never something that I'd really get into, but I guess that's personal preference. So you wouldn't do like a, vid like a promotional video, is that what you're saying? If it was up to me, I'd do... <laughs> like a dramatization of your life. What, what oh, if it's up to me, I'd do no cameras at all. But what could it be? Like It'd if, be nothing, yeah, if it was up to for, me. But for, for, for promotions? Like you're trying to promote a fight, how would you kind of sell to the public who you are that's not a direct video of what you do day to day? Oh, I leave it up to them. It's not up to me, I don't promote myself. So if they put out an idea like that, it's up to them? Oh, I'd say no to that. So... What would you be comfortable doing, I think? <laughs> yeah. He's so trying, I'm trying to get, get it. Generic, I'd say. Just your generic Some boxing video, stuff. yeah. You think he's a bit weird, don't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he's admitted that he's weird, so I don't mind saying that. What, what do you specifically find weird about him, though? The, obviously, there's the, the video and the talk about how much he's been thinking about you and the sparring session and this fight. What, what, what really irks you about him? I wouldn't say really irks. Like, I don't hate him. Hate's a strong word. I don't really hate anyone. But, um, yeah, just certain like things he says and stuff, just not, not really a fan, but that's just me. Well, give us some examples. What are you not a fan of? <laughs> oh, you put me on the spot, mate. Yeah, oh, please, please. I'm interested as well. I don't bloody know. You put me on the spot. I didn't come prepared for this. Well, there's been all this back and forth, obviously, but you haven't been in front of each other. But has there been some stuff that has been said along the way that has specifically stuck with you and that you've thought about? Because we know that Nikita's thought about you a lot. Have you been thinking about him more during this process because of the stuff that he's been saying? No, I don't think so. I don't think any more than I would a normal fight. Like, I, I, I'm always thinking about my opponent when I have a fight locked in, because that's prime priority, but I wouldn't say any extra than I would for a normal fight. You called him Baby Zoo yeah. the other day? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I want, to get, I want to talk about this. Why Baby Zoo? I'm very interested. Like, is it because know. I'm the youngest? Yeah, I'd say so. It's a, it's a weird thing to say that, like, baby. We can't get into weird things to say. Yeah, no, but it's just an odd thing to say. Like, why? what was the point of saying baby? I don't know, youngest. Is it because I look young? The youngest? I have a, I have a younger you sister. The youngest, the, the youngest of the fighting zoos. Okay, well, you never know. She could make a comeback. Well, she could, she could start a career. She's a, she's a tough little girl. Shout out to Nastya. <laughs> <laughs> Were there any connotations around Nikita being a bit spoilt when you said baby zoo? I don't know if I read into it that much. That's, yeah, you're kind of picking apart. I don't, I don't know, I, I, it's just kind of something I said. Is like, that what like, you took out of it? Yeah, like I, th I thought like you were trying to have like a dig at me f in like a weird way. Like I didn't have any offense to it. So like being called a baby, like it was, I, I, I honestly thought at first it was to do with like me looking like a, obviously like a little child. But then I started thinking about it. I was like, is it because I'm the youngest? What's the, is that meant to be an insult? No. But I just didn't know how to take it. The baby zoo, youngest zoo. It's just the youngest zoo? Yeah. So you could have said youngest zoo. Yeah, I could have, but that doesn't roll off the tongue as well. Yeah, true. Dramatisation. There you go. You're a filmmaker as well. <laughs> <laughs> you, when we've spoken previously, have admitted how much you've thought about the sparring mm -hmm. session, how much you've thought about this fight. How much are you thinking about Dylan at the moment? Because even the baby zoo comment, you just said that you you thought about that for a, a long time. No, it was a long time. It was literally just in the, uh, during that interview, the, on Friday, yeah, on Friday. And I kind of paused for a bit and I was just kind of like, a little, uh, what's it called? Like a little reboot in my head, like what's going on? Right. But in terms of like what I've been thinking about, yeah, this has been the number one thing that's on my mind. It's been the driving force for everything that I've been doing, everything that I do day to day in these last 10 weeks or so has been for this fight. And I know that the stakes are super high, so my best self is coming out. Because I know that the world's watching. It's not just Australia, the world's watching. I've, I, I saw uh, Sean Porter is in Sydney, so I'm guessing he's coming to the event. Yes. So there is gonna be a worldwide kind of audience involved with this. So the pressure's on for both of us. 
How many times a day would your mind turn to Dylan? I don't know if there's like a number, but it's kind of... I don't know how to say like a number, but a lot. Yeah. And that's been the case for a while, Dylan. I know you find that strange, uh, how central to Nikita's thoughts you've been. <laughs> This is where the dramatization thing comes in very, very well because that like kind of poster on the wall, that's kind of what I feel like. Like I, I have that image in my head of you, I'm mean like that dark tunnel, that's like my mind. And I'm just constantly looking at you, just kind of thinking, going back into those moments and yeah. <sighs> Throwing a knife. <laughs> How does that make you feel? Oh, I feel like I've already run over this topic. Like we've, we've just discussed the whole photo throwing thing. Didn't offend me. It's it's not a, I didn't really feel like it was a huge dig. I, I understand how he's explaining. It's like a, um, a, a visualization of his mind, you could say. Do you think about Nikita as much as he thinks about you? I doubt it. <laughs> um, more so, I'd say I spend more time thinking about tactics than thinking about the opponent. Nikita says that you've been the driving force for his career so far. Does that surprise you? Yeah, I, it, it's cool. It's good to have someone as, as high up as he is in Australian boxing to be thinking about me constantly. It's a cool thought, I guess. But you don't have that same sort of focus? I have the focus, I just don't have the obsession. Obsession, yeah, that's probably a good word for it. Did the obsession come from the sparring session? It was a kind of a starting factor, and then just just time was the answer. Time is, as, as time went on, I knew that this moment's coming. Did you feel like that? Yeah, I feel like we both worked our way through the ranks, and um, it was a matter of sooner or later rather than if. Yeah, it was more of a, a when than if question. Is the sparring session, and particularly you being dropped, Nikita, in that session, still something that you think about this close to the actual fight? The sparring session, no. Because I know that I'm a completely different person and I know the amount of progression that I've made since. I know the kind of the mindset that I have right now was completely different to what it was when I was just starting out. I had no idea what I was doing. I was four months in, so I was still like a little lost lamb, just running around, just listening to whatever advice that I can get. Is there any confidence you can take out of the fact that you did drop him, even though it was inspiring? Oh, it was two years ago. There's, it, I feel like it's been brought up to the point of exhaustion and it, it's such a long time ago that we've both progressed as fighters immensely and I don't think there's too much you can really take from it. I guess there's a, you could say there's a bit of a, a mental psychological edge to it but nothing more than that. When we spoke the other day you said that you were disappointed with some of the stories that you'd heard coming from Dylan's camp around what happened in that sparring session, some exaggerations about mm. the incident. Do you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, like we, uh, I didn't personally hear them. This, this was just word of mouth that I was being told. But your team or your, your management or whoever has been kind of over dramatizing the event, the, uh, that moment, saying that I was, I think I heard one where I was dropped with a body shot and I was rolling on the floor, like crying. Like, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no, but every like, person I've told, it's been the same story. He yeah, but maybe it's went not down, maybe, got back up. Yeah, but maybe you, but your team. Your team, they speak for themselves, right? Yeah, they, well, they, they, most of my they, team wasn't there on that day either. Yeah, well, it, does, it only takes like two, three people to, his, to see it, and you had, yeah, two, three people were there with you. People are going to spread rumours. I don't yeah. know what you want me to do about that. Yeah, but this, this is your team. That's what yeah, I'm but if you say. haven't heard from my mouth, then you can't judge me on it. Yeah, I'm not judging you on it, I'm judging your team. That's what we're saying. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, it was, it was, I was just like, your team has been over, over kind of exaggerating the moment. 
Cool. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice. Have you heard any other versions? Well, I don't think so because I don't know why someone else would tell me how the sparring went. Doesn't make sense. But every time I've told it's the same story. The, the real story. But that, that wasn't the real story. What's the real story? Oh, I've said it on TV already. That you hit him with a shot, he got up. Yeah, went That's down, got back up, kept going. We, I think we did like three more rounds, something like that. Two more. Two more. Clearly he's taken something out of it. <laughs> What does this fight mean to you, Dylan? Because you're established as an Australian champion, but this is your first time on the big show like this. Yeah, it means a lot. It's, um, I've said it before and I'm going to sound like a broken record, but it's just going to slingshot my career further than... It's, t having this fight takes me years further in progression than fighting on normal cards and building like that. What about for you, Nikita? What does this represent, this fight against Dylan Biggs? Just another step in the ladder. On but it's the, a big on the staircase. step. Yeah, another big step in the, in the staircase. And it's, uh, it's kind of like climbing to the peak of a mountain and then seeing another mountain in front and then finding it another, going for another hike afterwards. This is the first mountain I have to climb. And this is the way you see it, the start of the next phase, the big phase of your career? Yeah, this is the, basically like the tipping point where I get to really show the public my best self. Like I've, I haven't been able to show my best self yet. I know that there's so much more to my game than what I've, uh, than what I've produced on the TV. So this is the this is the big moment where where I make it or I break it. What have you seen from him? Because I'm sure you've watched his fights, and we know that you were there for the Brubaker fight. Have you been impressed with what he's done, having sparred him previously, or do you think there's still holes? He's there's there's holes in everyone's game, but he's definitely a worthy opponent. He's he's shown that, and he's he's put uh, he's gone up with some quality opponents, and he's put him out. So I don't know. I can't knock that. Yeah, so you're saying I have quality opponents now? You've previously had a dig at my record. I never saying had a dig at your record. Yeah, I, re I remember you had a dig at my record. And what did saying I say? Saying that I was fighting like nobodies or just like people that are just coming to just get a quick buck. Yeah, I said they quit. I never said there were no ones. Yeah, but... People turn up on the night, but they don't turn up on the night. Do you want me to elaborate? Yes, please. Go. They turn up on the night, but they don't turn up to win. They turn up and then they're afraid and they don't turn up Why do you mentally. think that? I, I don't know, I guess it's the show and the promotion and all the bright lights get to them. So you're gonna be something different? Yeah. You think the bright lights aren't gonna to get to you? No. Just a bunch of cameras. <laughs> only two people and in the lot, ring. And a lot of people around as well. That's cool. It's only two people in the ring. Mm. Fans can't fight for you. I know, I know. Do you think he's relying on the show a little bit to get inside opponents' heads and to push things in his favour? I think he believes it'll have more of an edge than it will. That's what I believe. I honestly don't think the crowd has anything to do with it. It's just more of like a... Well, you said I'm going to crumble, so... No, no, no. I think uh, the crowd just has like a bit of like a nerve-wracking kind of feeling to it because I remember the first my, my pro debut fighting in that arena I kind of froze up for the first round I was kind of still kind of adjusting to it so there is those little moments of getting used to it and just, just it's just a new environment for yourself so but at the end of the day when the fight gets when the fight gets going the fight gets going and this is going to be the main event in Newcastle a packed house there with a lot of Zoo fans, do you think that it's going to impact him? It could, yeah, I think it could. I'm not relying on it because I want to have the the sweetness of knowing that it was all me, not the not the crazy Zoo Castle people. <laughs> have you done anything in particular to make sure that you don't end up like some of the opponents that you've criticised that? 
the occasion doesn't impact you and lose this fight for you? That's never been me. I've fought on some big cards, obviously not to the, to the status of Newcastle, but I fought on big cards and I feel like once you hit a certain amount of people, it's, it's no different the more people that come. It's just a crowd at the end of the day. Is it just a crowd? Is there more to it? Is it, do they help you? Do they help you fight? Do they help you be in the moment? They bring a sense of energy, but the fight, it's still the same. The fight's a fight. Are you more motivated for this fight than you have been for any of the others? Because Easily. Yeah. And, and why is that? Um, just because I know how much is on the line. The fight that I was second most motivated for was against Dryden, basically this time last year. And I remember the, the kind of thought process that was going through my mind was similar because I knew that he was a dangerous opponent. He has knockout power and I'm going into kind of his territory as well. Like there was, Newcastle was still, uh, had, has a lot of my family's fans, but it's also the hometown of the Drydens. So yeah, I knew that there was a huge event and yeah, there were definitely nerves going into it, but I, I love the nerves because the nerves are what bring the fire and they bring the attention to detail. Who do you think Australian boxing sees as the favourite in this fight? Who were they expecting to win this fight? As far as I've seen, I think most people think it's a 50-50 fight, which is for, as far as boxing fans are concerned, is exactly what you want. It's a fight that's unpredictable and no one knows the result. Can you understand why they think it's a 50-50 fight and why some odds have been made that have Nikita the favourite, or, or does that baffle you? No, he's got the fans, and I get that. That's it's a big part of the game. He's got the publicity and the fans, and that's a lot of a driving point for a lot of that stuff. But with what you've done in the ring, compared to what he's done, do you think you should be expected to win this fight? I don't know about expected. It's a tough fight. It's going to be a good one. But if you line up your record against his, who's got the better record? Who should be the favourite? I've got the numbers, so I'd say me. But, is it, but do you have the quality opponents? That's a good question. Because I had a look at your record in the first, first few fights. They just came for the paycheck, essentially. Yeah, but... A lot of people don't understand that. But that's, that's when, part of boxing. Look, yeah, that's part when of boxing. You have an extensive that's amateur of... career. Getting finding fights is such a hard thing, especially when you don't have the financial backing of the the no limit team. So just finding an opponent's a mission in itself. Like every camp, it was five or six different opponents saying yes, pulling out, just dramas. And do you think if you win this fight, those days are over? You don't have to worry about being a B-side, being an outsider, everything will change? Look, he's not even the, he's not, he's not the B-side, he's the A-side, come on. He's the, he's the Aussie champ. He's the A-side? Let him be the A-side. I want, I want him to be the A-side. So I'm, we'll I'm switch get, the names I'm on get, the poster? I'm getting sick of being considered or being expected to win all the time. It's getting boring. I want to kind of mix things up a bit. So can he walk out second? It's not up to me. It's, it's all about the promoters. Do you think he means that? That you can be the A-side? Or do you think the closer we get to this fight... What, it, what even is the A-side? Like, what is it? Is it just like betting odds or what? Well, it's the person around whom the fight is sold. Mm -hmm. The dominant party in the main fight. Yeah. And it's the favourite, that's what it means. So like the kind of like the betting favourite. Is that, is that well, that's, like that's a different thing, but often they go hand yeah. in hand. Okay, well, who cares if who's the favourite? Like, why does it matter? Why is, why is there such a big deal about this? We haven't been talking about this. Is, has it been your team that's constantly bringing it up? Who cares about who's the favourite? Well, there's been a lot of conversation there. around the walkout. That has been a major story. And I think that is from dissatisfaction from you and your team around mm -hmm. if that were to happen. Is that yeah, fair yeah. to say? Yeah, it's fair to say. Just the, the whole 
historics behind its tradition of boxing. The the A side or the the champion walks first, uh, walks second. Sorry, and I feel like that shouldn't change. What if they tell you that you have to walk first? Are you gonna protest? I heard, I heard, I heard you were going to do like a little uh, Mexican standoff, just not walk out. Yeah, we'll see. Like, like, like you said, it's not up to me. It's under Wait, whenever, whenever you get the call to go out, that's when you go out. It's as simple as it is. Oh, well, that's so, up to me. It's no limits. That's their events. We just follow their show. Is there a chance that you won't walk out? Oh, there's definitely a chance. I'm stubborn, that's me. But we'll see what happens. So you, you would tarnish the events simply on pride? Yeah, I would. Wow. Well, wow. not saying I will, are, but I, I would. guess you are 21 years old. Yeah. Still a little immature. You could say that, sure. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do if you hear from his dressing room that he's refusing to walk? Will you walk or Look, will you when just I, wait? When I, when I hear it's your turn to walk, I walk. I'm not going to act like a little, little brat and have a little cry over pride. When I, get the, when I get the call, it's your time to walk, I go for it. It's not pride, it's tradition. Okay. I think he's just referred to you as a brat. Yeah, that's fine. He's older than me. I understand that. That I'm still... I wouldn't say younger in the sport because I've had more fights, but... That's fine. I, I'm not one for talking. I let my hands do the talking. And I'm happy to do that on Wednesday night. Well, if we do make it to the ring, and let's hope that we do. <laughs> Top to you. What's going to happen? Balls in your court. What do you think is going to happen in this fight? What, what version of him are you expecting? Is it going to be an aggressive Dylan Biggs using that confidence of the sparring session and, and everything else that he's taking into this fight? Or do you think he tries to box? Well, I'm not going to talk about tactics. But what about his tactics? What do you think he's going to do? Yeah, but his tactics are the tactics that I'm thinking about. Well, I'll uh, talk about this. Do you think he's going to come and try and take your head off? I think a lot of the, the media and I think I heard Glenn say something about if I can get past the first four rounds or media is talking about the first four rounds, so I'd say the first four rounds are the proving ground for me. Wait, if you get past the first four rounds, it's what? No, that, that's just the, the general census. If I can get past the first four rounds. Then what? If you can't stop me in the first four. Yeah. But then what does it mean up afterwards? Then he thinks then he's going to outbox you. Oh, then you outbox me. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. What do you think about that theory? It's interesting. I'm not one of a quick starter, so... You're not a quick starter. You've stopped most, most opponents of opponents in the first in the couple of rounds. Four. Well, I try not to consider myself as a quick start. <laughs> <laughs> it is a little bit different wording. What about if we go to the cards, Dylan? Do you think there's any possibility that they'll give you the scores? Or do you think you have to stop Nikita? Yeah, this is another thing that I've been hearing that your team has been kind of... Oh, no, that was me. That, you, that was me. I said, that, yeah. about... I said, I'm not going to win a decision in Newcastle against... Nikita Zewis. You really think you'll be that biased? Definitely. I think you got the fans behind you as well and that makes a difference. What? Uh, I don't know, man. The, the, what's it called? Combat New South Wales? I don't think they're that corrupt. If you're clearly winning, you think that they would give us a fight away? Yeah, I think that, that, that you have an edge on the scorecards to begin with, yeah. So you have to knock him out? I don't think I have to. Like, I said he has an edge. I, don't, I didn't say it's not possible, but I'd say knocking him out's cheap insurance. What do you think? Which side? Both. Both? The wall? Yeah. <laughs> Anything else you want to say to each other? Gentlemen, we've covered a lot of ground. Clearly there were some things that were annoying you, in particular Nikita, and we know there's a couple of issues that remain for you, Dylan. Is there anything else you want to say before we move into the rest of Fight Week? 
Honestly, not really. We're going to be talking to each other tomorrow anyway at the press conference. So I'm just really happy that this moment is finally here because, yeah, it's been a long time coming. Dylan, anything you'd like to say before we wrap up? I hope you're ready. That will be. Get that belt warm for me. Oh, it's staying with me. <laughs> that is Nikita Zhu and Dylan Biggs. A very exciting domestic matchup that we are even more excited for now. You'll see it all on main event this Wednesday night. I'm Ben Damon. I'll see you at the fights.